Man, what a great couple days. Seriously, you know, you know, guys. Here's we 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 we'll start planning for next year, right? Right when we're done here, because I think this this event, getting men together, and thank you, Donnie. Getting, getting guys together and just kind of, I was talking to a couple of the guys, it's kind of that, that opportunity to kind of re, readjust, refocus, kind of, you know, consider what, what it is that, that we're doing and as men. And, and I, I look forward to this, man. It, it is, for me, one of the highlights of the year is getting the guys together and sending an army out into this communities, into our churches, into our, 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 our places of, of work, that, that we, we send men out there to change the world that we're in. And, and that happens, guys, in your sphere. It happens with, with the people that God puts into your path. You see, the, the church isn't the evangelist. You're the evangelist. We're, we're, we're here to... to teach and to equip and we're, we're, we're here to, to, to prepare you to go back into the mission field. That, that's our job as pastors. And it's, it's one, one of the things that, that um, has to happen on an individual basis. And so I, my, that, that, that's, that's our prayer is to, is, is to get you guys ready to get back out there. I, I want to I kind of open up with... Um, just kind of some of the things that, that, that as I was looking at this passage, I, I got sharing your faith or evangelism is kind of my, my topic today. And, and there is one thing that, that I think haunts me to this day. See, I grew up, uh, my, my dad was, was a partier, smoked dope, did drugs, drank. I don't remember my dad not having uh, a 12-pack on the way home from work. I, n nowhere in my childhood do I remember a day when dad wasn't sitting there with a Budweiser in his hand. And it was um, somewhere around 12 years old, I, uh, I, I started to kind of follow in his footsteps, started smoking dope. Being so young, all of my friends weren't introduced to that, so, so I introduced a whole lot of guys to getting high. All my friends, all, all the guys I hung with, growing up playing baseball, you know, all, all my peers, we, we, I, I'd get them high for the first time. And, and, I, and I thought I was introducing them to something cool. <laughs> I thought I was doing something, I was thought I was doing them a favor. But by getting stoned with them and, and introducing them to, to the things that um, were wicked. And, 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 you know, you, you kind of look back like, man, I, and, and some of my friends still addicted to drugs, still, still battling with addiction. And I'm going, man, I, I'm, the one who, I'm the one who put them on that path. And, and, and you know, you, you kind of, you it haunts you. You know, I, I still pray for several of my friends that, that, are, that are still battling with the, some of the things that I introduced them to. I remember going to, I, I went to eighth grade, I went, I went to, to, to uh, public school, ninth grade, I went to private school, Catholic school, Bishop Almond, if anyone's from Southern California, everyone knows Bishop Almond, one, one of the premier schools, I loved baseball, I was playing baseball for, for them, that was kind of why I had shifted that way, and, and um, while I was in Bishop Beaumont, we went, I was going to start my junior year. My mom was come in. We're going to get me signed up. And the dean shows up to the meeting. He says, you know what? Um, Ray will not be welcome to come back next year. What did I do? My good grades, playing sports. And, and he, here, here was the dean's words. He's a bad influence on the other students. I, would, I never got busted. But I was always the common denominator with everyone else getting busted around me. <laughs> and they knew that guy's just a conniver. And, and you know, we, we haven't caught him yet, but we know he's guilty because my, my influence that, that I had upon those guys that I was hanging with, it, 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 was, it was evident even to the school teachers and evident to the, to the deans. And, you know, you, so you, you, you kind of stand back and you go, man, he... Uh, he, 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 he 
had this influence upon those around him. Now, I had a family friend who, growing up, played baseball. All their family were kind of played played baseball since I was a little guy, all, all the way through high school, and and. It was um, th this family friend, George. I remember George, he, that, 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 that guy had haunted me. Every time I'd pass George in the hallway, he was a couple grades older than me, but, but George would always be in the hallway and, and he'd walk by and he'd say, hey Ray, I'm praying for you. I was like, oh, I don't want you to pray for me. <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm having fun right now. You know, George, George, every time I'd see George, hey, Ray, I'm praying for you. Guys, he meant it. He meant it with all of his heart, man. I'm praying for you, Ray. We were at the liquor store, 17, 18 years old, buying, buying a couple cases of beer. We're, we're, you know, fake IDs, the whole thing. We're, we're walking through, and George walks up, and he puts his arm around me. I'm at the counter. We're, you know, ready to, to purchase the booze, and he puts his arm around me. He says, Ray, Jesus loves you. And the only thing I can say back to him, he loves you too, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, dude, I, I didn't even get buzzed that night. He had, he had space in my head. Because, because I, I knew what George was saying was, was, was right. George ran into him just a couple years ago, blew my mind. I, I, I hadn't seen George since I got saved. He, I was at a conference in, in Diamond Bar and George is that, Ray, is that you? George, <laughs> gave him a big hug, man. Told him to thank you. Thank you for the influence that you had on my life. You, you see, George, George, um, he, 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 he messed with me <laughs> for years. I'd, I'd, I'd hear his voice, I'm praying for you. Jesus loves you. And, and, and man, let, let me tell you something, man, you're gonna have an influence on people's lives. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, it's either gonna be for good or it's gonna be for evil. Your influence is going to impact your wife, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren. You have an influence upon the people that you have in contact with. Whether that is an influence that's going to, going to have an impact for them being stirred up for good works. Or to be stirred up for evil. But your influence is going to impact people. And, and I, I tell you, man, I, I've never ever wanted my life to be an impact or, or an influence for something that, that, was, that was evil again. I want my influence to impact something that, that, that is good. And I'm gonna ask you guys to, to turn to Philippians chapter one real quick. We're just, just a side note and then we'll get into our text. Philippians chapter one, look at verse 27. And let's pray before we even get there. Let's pray, Father, we ask that you would Lord, just prepare our hearts for the things that, that you desire to speak. And God, may, may we, Lord, have the capacity, God, to hear what you want to say. Would your spirit, God, just ignite within us, God, this, this passion, this urgency for the days that we're living in, Lord. And God, may our influence be, God, for the kingdom. And we ask that you'd bless that. And we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Interesting passage. He's writing to the church of Philippi and he says, look, your conduct, men, your conduct, how you conduct yourself, it should be in a line with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That you and I are out representing a kingdom. 
that you and I are, are in, in the midst of, of an evil and perverse generation, and, and you, you and I have been told to be what? The light and the salt of the world. We're, we're to have an influence upon those around us. And the only way you can have an influence is your conduct has to match what you believe, the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're in, you're, your conduct can't contradict He's not telling us that we, 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 we need to somehow be perfect or somehow be, be you know, uh, um, above anything and everybody. We, but our conduct should be in align with what you believe. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that, that, that's at work. That's at home. That's on the ball field. It's, it's, it's in your hobbies. It's everywhere that, that you Find yourself if you're, you know, there serving our country, or if you're 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 there uh, hanging with the guys. That your conduct should represent the gospel of Jesus Christ. It should it should be, and he uses an interesting word here. It should be worthy of. In other words, it it, it should measure up to what what you hold to be true. And now I, I want to ask you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read this passage. Beginning in verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God and has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And then, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. You see, you and I, have been given the responsibility as representatives for the kingdom to declare this good news to a world around us. It's, it's, it's not optional, men. It's, it's, not, it's not, well, I don't think I'm an evangelist. No, your life is preaching. You don't even have to open your mouth. Your life is, is declaring something. Your conduct is declaring something. And you and I are to be men who declare this kingdom that you and I are citizens of. And, and knowing this, that everyone in opposition to this kingdom, one day will stand before a living God and they'll give an account for their life. Every one of them. It's across the board. My, my, my neighbors, my co-workers, my aunts and my uncles and my family members, they, they're all going to stand before a living God. Matter of fact, it was just earlier, the, look, look at chapter 5, verse 9, watch, watch what, what Paul had before he brought up this whole idea of reconciliation. Look what he says here, therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad, knowing this, the terror of Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we, check it out, persuade men. But we are well known to God. And I also trust that we are known in your conscience. And here, here's, here's what the, the apostle declares. He says, look, it, it's, it's, it's our desire. It's our aim. It's, it, it's our passion. It's, it's, it's our d d desire to, to be well-pleasing to the creator, to the maker, to the king. And then it's not just that, but knowing that one day we'll give an account for our lives. And because we know that to be true, because I, I, I believe that in, in, in the core of my being, I believe that one day I'm going to stand before my God, that I also want to persuade men of that same very fact. John sh sh shared it so, so, so 
eloquently that, that the Holy Spirit's work is to convict us of our sin, of righteousness, the, what, what's needed in order to be forgiven for that sin, and then there's going to be a day of judgment one day. And that's the Holy Spirit's job is to convict. But let me tell you something. He uses the instruments to do the convicting. It's, it's words. It's, it's what you and I represent. There's some people who, who you, that despise you because every time they see you, they're reminded of their own sin. And so that work, they, they avoid you. I, I, I tell you, in, in that hallway, George, I, I, would, try, I would walk around the building. <laughs> Because I, I, if I knew George was walking this way, man, I, I'm, I'm going to try not to run into George because I know what he's going to tell me and he's going to remind me again how messed up I am. <laughs> and he didn't say it in a condemning way. It was just, I'm praying for you. And every time I heard that, I knew. I, I, I knew I, I needed to change my course. And it should be, man, that every time people run across us, that, that they, they are reminded of their own insufficiency because they see what God is doing in our lives. I, I, I tell you, this idea of reconciling, well, the, the, the whole idea the, to be reconciled means to change from one thing to another, to return to favor with. And God has reconciled us to him. That, that, that's, he changed our relationship all by himself. It wasn't something that I did to earn it. It wasn't something that I did to accomplish it. It was something that, that God did on my behalf. And all he's asking you and I to do is to acknowledge that, that we're, we're in need of reconciliation. We're messed up without him. That, that's, that's this whole idea of reconciliation. And he took the righteousness of Jesus Christ and he exchanged it for the filth of sin. And that's the gospel message. It's that, it's, it's that simple. That, that the, the God who created us desired to have a relationship with us. But you and I mucked it up. We brought all of this garbage, this baggage to the table. And Jesus says, look, I, I, I'm going to take care of the garbage. If you, by faith, would, would come and, and, and call out to me and I'll, I'll, I'll wash away the sin that so ensnares you, that, that it has entrapped you. And, and the moment that we do that, that you, you and I now become right with God. We, we've been reconciled with God. And then he goes on and he says, look, and not only are you going to be reconciled to God, but you're going to go and you're going to be the instrument that's going to reconcile others to me. Didn't he say that there in that passage? Go, go back with me in verse, um, verse 28 where he says, Now all things are God who has reconciled himself to us through Jesus Christ and he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Guys, he, he's, he's talking to the church. He's talking to this, this little church in, in Philippi where he's saying, look, you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. You're out there to tell the world that they can get right with God. And that God's provided everything necessary to accomplish that. That isn't something that, um, it, it, that happens just off the pulpit. It happens in, in, in a conversation. It happens amongst our, our peers, our friends. That you have the ministry of reconciliation. Here, here's the danger that I, I, I think that you and I fall into. Is we, we start to think that, you know what, that's not my job. Or I don't know how to, how, how to do that. It's not politically correct in our culture that you and I are living in to go and try to convert people. Do you know what? You should be converting people. You should be proselytizing. That, that's your job. That's the ministry that you've been entrusted with. Men. You've been entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. You see, our, our world's telling us that, that we just got to respect everyone else's beliefs. Don't, don't try to push your religion on me. And, and, I, and I, I, I get, we, we, can't, we can't be with a bullhorn on, on Main Street screaming at people, telling them they're going to hell. I mean, maybe, maybe that's your ministry. I, I, that's not all our ministries. <laughs> right? I, I don't think that, that's, that's what... what this ministry of reconciliation is about. 
It, 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 it doesn't mean that, that you're on the job site trying to convert people during work. If you're working, you get paid to work, work. But then at break time, when everyone else is telling you what they did on Saturday night, and who they slept with, and how much they drunk, and how they, they get, what did you do Saturday night? Let me, let me tell you what I did Saturday night. Let me, let me tell you where I was on Friday. And, 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 and it's you taking that same opportunity they're taking to produce their evil, and you now turn it around and say, let me, let me tell you, let me tell you what, what a different perspective is. You know how many open doors there are every day to share the gospel with those around you? And you don't have to be pushy. You don't have to be rude. You don't, you don't, you don't have to be nasty about it. You, you, man, just declaring what God is doing in your life every day, it, it blows my mind, man. I, 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 I've kind of... Um, taking up golf the last couple of years, and, and, and there's a little little Thursday night league, and, and I, it's, it's all the, the drunkards that join this league. It's, they're all hacks. None of them know how to golf with nothing. We're just, it's, it's horrible. So, so it's kind of like, a, a, you know, three guys on a team, and everyone hits, you pick the best ball, and, and, and everyone, everyone on that team is a bunch of borrachos, right? They, they use it as an excuse to get out of the house to get drunk, and, and, I, and I'm sitting there, Got a little team together with one of my cousins. He's he's you know not not really a believer, and and he, he they were there golfing and and Pastor Ray's here. <laughs> the cussing stops all of a sudden. It's weird. You just and I and I and I tell the guys on my team, look, don't tell them Pastor Ray. Wait at least until we're in the like fifth hole. <laughs> Because I love to see the reaction on their face, you know, after they've done, you know, using every cuss word and cursing the name, and then they, they go, oh, did you jump? This is Pastor Ray. And then they, you just see their face sink and, you know, just. But, but here, here's the cool thing, man. I, I've got to share with, with, I can't tell you how many men just there on a golf course. Telling them, let me let, let me tell you something, man. I, I'm nobody. You don't have to stop cussing because of me. But you know, tell you there's someone that's gonna one day give an account for everything you've done. <clears throat> don't, don't 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 be the don't let me be the reason. Let let, let because because he, you know that he's watching every and and I since then, man. I, I've had guys come in. Hey, I. I, I, I'm going through something. I, I, I got some battle I'm going on. My, my marriage is a mess. And I've been able to, to just kind of share. But th th let me tell you guys, that opportunity is your opportunity. Yeah. You're, you're out there. You see, I, I, I'm kind of protected around four walls most, most of the week. People that are, that are hurting, they, they, come, they come here. <laughs> and it's kind of, they're already ready. They, when you show up to church to kind of, you know, find help, they're, they're already kind of broken down. It's kind of easy for me, right? <laughs> like fishing on, on, on one of those kiddie ponds. <laughs> They're starving already. <laughs> I remember taking my kids the first time I didn't, I didn't knew anything about the kiddie pond and then they're just pulling out fishing left and right and we're all excited and they had to go and pay for it. I'm like, what? But you, you're, you're, you're out there, you're out there in, the, in, in, the, in the mission field. And I, can, can I tell you, man, something? We have a world that is starving for spiritual truth. It's getting pretty close to a kiddie pond out there. <laughs> because people are hungry. They, they, they know that, that, that there, there's something lacking. They know that this world is, is, is crumbling right underneath our feet. I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I never thought I would see what I'm seeing in the culture that you and I are living in. Never expected. I, it, it took me totally. Now, it shouldn't have because you've kind of seen the gradual steps there. But man, after COVID, it was like, it was just like ignited. They are bold. They don't even care. You, you, you start getting drag queens dancing for kindergartens. You're like, 
what, 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 how, what, how do we get there? And so you and I are told that, that we're, we're, we're the representative of the kingdom. You, you, got, you, you, you soldiers are out there to represent the king. You got a responsibility. I like how Jude put it in Jude chapter one, the brother of our Lord, he said it like this, keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. Wow. It's like you, you, you and I are, are now firemen. <laughs> Right, they're pulling people out of the fire because the flames of hell are already starting to consume. And you and I have been given this incredible, incredible privilege. He uses a, and another word here. He says, we're ambassadors. We represent a kingdom. You're an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven to a world that is rejected, that kingdom. And you're out there represent it. You're out there to declare it. You're out there to, to preach it. I was reading, a, uh, it, was, it was Dr. Rayner in, in his book, The Unchanged, The Unchurched Next Door. He says this, 82% of the unchurched are at least somewhat likely to attend church if someone invited them. Okay. People are waiting for someone to tell them about the Lord. Someone to say, hey, would, would you go to church with me? Because they're, they're intimidated to walk into a church without someone knowing somebody or having some kind of relationship that's already established. This is his other statistic in that same book. Only 2% of church members invite an unchurched person to church. The majority of people are waiting to be engaged and only 2% are engaging. Wow. What, what, what a sad statement for the church. And you're an ambassador. And I had to ask the question, you know, did just is in my, when, when's the last time, when, when's the last time that, that I actually invited someone to come to church? Outside of my little circle that, I, that I'm protected by, right? When, when's the, hey, man, why don't, you, why don't you show up? When's the last time you did? When's the last time you said, they, 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 let, let, me, let me just share with you what, what God's doing in my life. You don't have to preach to that. Let me just tell you what God's doing in my life. And then at the end, you're just like, hey, let me tell you what, he can do that in your life too. If you, if, you, if, if you would just embrace him, if you would just ask for forgiveness and have him come and change your life. Guys, we've been given that ministry. We've been given that responsibility to tell others that they too can be reconciled. I, I, I love how verse 19 plays out where he says, look, that is, here, here's, here's what this ministry of reconciliation looks like. That is God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, but he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He's committed to us this word of reconciliation, telling the world that they can be made right with God. And it's nothing they have to do. It was something he's already done. All you have to do is accept it and embrace it. It was um, Staten and, and his commentary. I thought, he, I thought he, he laid it out very, very eloquently. He says, he does not hold sin against us, but he does hold something up to us. He holds us up to us the message of reconciliation, which he expects to come out of us to others. He expects the Christian who's been saved to be interested in saving others. He expects the beggar who has found bread to be interested in telling other beggars where to, the bread can be found. If no one does, or if one does not accept that ministry, then that one has rejected God's new covenant. Wow. 
He said, if one hasn't accepted that ministry, you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. And if you haven't accepted that ministry, then, then you've rejected God's new design, God's new covenant that he has with us. I know so many of us don't do it. We don't share our faith. We, we don't open our mouth because there's, there's, there's a price to pay often. Rejection, fear, fear of failure. But don't, don't, don't forget what, when, when it was mentioned earlier, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Remember what Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe the things I command you. And Jesus says this, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's probably where we're at. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm with you even to the end of the age. Guys, you have to choose. Are you going to be politically correct or are you going to be biblically correct? Because you, you can be politically correct and just stay silent and, and declare nothing. And I, I don't want to offend anybody. And I don't want anyone to, get, to be mad at me. Or I don't want anyone to look at me in some, some, you know, weird, um, some weird way. Or you can stand up and say, you know what, I, I, I'm going I'm to share my faith with everyone that God opens a door to allow me to do so. I'm, I'm going to look for opportunities. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask God to, to make me an ambassador of the kingdom, one who represents. Guys, you know what an ambassador is? It's an official rank or office. That's what an ambassador is. It's an official rank or office, and you are an ambassador of the kingdom. You've been knighted. You've been ordained. I love, as John said, you, you, you've been empowered by the Holy Spirit to represent the kingdom of heaven. And, and you have a responsibility. And it's something that God has accomplished. It's not something that, that you and I are, are able to, to accomplish. It's something God's accomplished. He's already done it. It's already, been, it's already been paid for. It's already been satisfied. He gave his son, bled out so that he can do that work in the lives of our family members, our friends, our co-workers. And, and yet you and I have been given this amazing, amazing responsibility and it's not to convert anybody, because I've never converted anybody. All they can do is tell them. The work of the Holy Spirit is to convert them. I, I've never, never, never in my life have saved a man or a woman. You see, that, that's Jesus' job. He already did it. I like it. It was Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, who said, the word of God is like a lion. You don't have to defend a lion. All you have to do is let the lion loose and the lion will defend itself. All, all, all that, that you and I have been given this, this great responsibility just, just to speak the word of God into the lives of others. Not be intimidated by, by this world or the things of it. And I love verse 21. Man, isn't that one of, one of the most amazing passages? He made him who knew no sin the one that was perfect, the one that was sinless, he made him to be sin. And then he says that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's, that's the message, man. My, I, I'm, I'm praying, let me tell you my prayer. My prayer is that we, that we would unleash you guys back into your communities. That there, 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 would, there would be a new passion, a new hunger to go and say, man, I, I'm going I'm to ask the Lord to, to give me opportunities to just declare his righteousness and our need for that righteousness upon a community. I'm going to ask you to turn one more place. It was just a little bit earlier in Paul's letter to Second. In, in 2 Corinthians, second letter to Corinth in chapter 2. Look at, look at verse 4. Nope, I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. That's where it's at. I believe. Let me check. Let 
got that one wrong too. It was, well, I'm going to read it to you. I, I think it's 2 Corinthians 2.4, and I thought it was 2 Corinthians 2.4, but let me, let me um, I'm in a wrong epistle or something. And someone's going to tell me which verse it is because I'm going blank, but I'm going to read it. I have it in my notes. Let's do it. Now, thanks be to God who has always led us in triumph in Christ. And through us, check this out, he diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Oh, it's verse 14. There it is. Okay. Verse 15, chapter 2, 2 Corinthians. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, you're the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but on the contrary, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. And man, I, that, that passage, just, every time I, I, I read it, just like, man, you and I are a fragrance. You're the fragrance of Christ to the world that, that, is, that is full of stench. And you're an aroma. Your life is an aroma. You see, your aroma is, is going to be embraced both to those that are saved and to those who reject that salvation. To one, you're the aroma of death and they, they, they smell their own stench because of your presence and because of your boldness and because of your courage to stand and declare these truths. And to some, you, 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 you're going to be avoided. They're going to walk around. They're, they're, you're going, they're going to go down other hallways because, because they can smell the fragrance of Christ coming out of you. And to others, you're going to be that sweet aroma. I, I, I'm so grateful, so grateful for George. I'm so grateful for those who took the time and, 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 and some place in some arena to, to, to kind of just try to share this gospel, this message with me. And, and I, I, oh, I'm indebted to these men because of their influence upon my life. And let me tell you something, guys. You're going to have an influence. At work, at home, whatever arena you, you're going to walk out of here, go back to, to, to your wife or to your kids or, or to, to your friends, and you're, you're, you're going to have some aroma that's going to come off of you. And someday there's going to be someone said, man, I am so grateful, so grateful that you said what you said, that you stood for what you stood for, that you didn't buckle, you didn't waver, you, you, did, you, did, you didn't back down in declaring this gospel of reconciliation to me. The story of D.L. Moody, and I would quote him often because he, he was such, such, a, such an evangelist, had such a heart for, for, for the souls of men. He was in London during a, one of his famous evangelistic tours. Several British, British clergymen visited him and they wanted to know why this poorly educated American was so effective in winning throngs of people to Christ. And Moody took him to the window of his hotel room. And one by one, he asked each of them to look out that window and describe to him what they saw. And it was people in the park, cars kind of, you know, you know, traffic and people, people, people everywhere. And Moody looked at, out that window and he began to weep, tears rolling down his eyes and his cheeks. And one of the men asked him, Moody, what do you see? And he says, I see countless thousands of souls that will one day spend eternity in hell if they do not find the Savior. 
And he told those men, until you see the world that way, there's not going to be a revival in your ministries. Guys, we, we need to see the world the way it is. There's two kingdoms. The kingdom that's heading to hell and the flames of fire are, are heating up. Are, 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 we're, 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 I'm convinced. Now, I, I'm not a prophet. I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that next week the Lord's coming. I tell you what, I'm convinced we're living in the last days. I'm convinced with all my heart. We're, we're, we're right at the precipice. We're, we're right there. I'm convinced of it. Everything lines up with it. Everything prophetically lines up with it. There's nothing on the table right now that's not in the horizon that, that, that's already plausible for all, all of the, the events of, of revelation to un, unfold, all the, the one world government. It's being talked about like, it, like it's going to happen. The one world monetary system. All of our, our, our economies are ready to implode. The ability to, to take a chip and be the only way you can do business. You know, the, the, this whole idea of Bitcoin and all, all of the, the, the cryptocurrencies and all of it just kind of funneling into the, this one idea of a government coming in and saying this is the only way transactions can take place. And guys, we, we are at the forefront of all of that. We're right there. The lies that have been propagated. The propaganda that's been unleashed, not, not just in one nation, throughout the globe. And, and, and we're watching all of these things unfold right before us. It should create within you and me an urgency. We, we should be going, man, I, I don't know if I got another month. I don't know if I got another year. There's people all around us on their way to hell. Let it not be said that we never warned them. Let it not be said that, that you never told me. Can, can you imagine all this goes down and, and you, you got someone that was a best friend or someone that, that, that you had conversations with on a daily basis and, and they at the end of it all say, you know what, you never told me. You never warned me. It was Paul when he was converted. He recalls that day in Acts 26, 17, Jesus speaking, I'll deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive the forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. He's Paul, Paul. Paul's mission was, you know what, I, 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 you're, you're, you're going to now take those that are living in darkness and you're going to bring them to the light. Those that are under the power of Satan and you're going to bring them to the power of God. Guys, it should be a burden in every one of our hearts. Like a Spurgeon, again, he would say, I would sooner bring one sinner to Jesus Christ then unravel all the mysteries of the divine word for salvation is the one thing we are to live for. I, I would rather bring one soul to salvation. I, I'd rather tell one person about the message of the kingdom than to have all the wisdom in the world. I, I, I loved that story about D.L. Moody. They said, you're, 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 you're not very educated, Moody. <laughs> you're not a very smart guy. How is it that you're having such an impact? It was because Moody had a burden for souls. Men, I, I, I think if you don't have a burden for souls, you need to start praying for God to give you a burden for souls. That, that God, God would burn something in our hearts to say, God, there's people all around me that don't know you. God, help me to see them how you see them. Help me to love them how you love them. Help me to be bold enough to speak to them, even though that's not my character. It's not, it's not something that I would do. But by your power and the power of the Holy Spirit, 
that you provided, that you would give me open doors to tell them about you? It should be, it should be our prayer. I, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just challenge you guys, get radical. Get radical. Get radical to the point where you're willing to overcome your fear of sharing your faith. I, I think it's, it's pretty, well, I know this. I did some foolish things before I came to Christ. I, I acted like a drunk, stoned, and I, I made a fool of myself on more than one occasion. And I did it for nothing. <laughs> I did it for, for j just, just for the sake of doing it. But what about becoming a fool for something that's going to count for eternity? How about just going, you know what, I, I'm going to put myself out there and whatever happens, happen. I, I, I'm going to do something that's outside of my comfort zone. That's what radical people do. I go outside my comfort zone and I begin to decide, man, I'm going to start praying for this person. And I'm going to ask God, open a door for me to share my faith with someone else. Tell them about the reconciliation that's been provided for them if they would just accept by faith what the finished work of the cross provides. That's radical. Understand something, you may get rejected. You, you might get laughed at. You might be looked differently from that point forward. All part of it. But it may be, it may be by the grace of God that he would convict that person's heart and bring about a transformation in that person's life. Because the power of God's word and the power of the Holy Spirit took root inside of that man, that woman. Guys, we're, we're, we're living in times that an army needs to be unleashed on our culture. We're, we're, I, 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 whether Jesus comes back in the next couple years or he doesn't, let, let, let me tell you something. We're at the end of a civilization right now. Every civilization that comes to its end, it comes from within. Go to the Roman Empire. We, we are mimicking the fall of Rome where debauchery, public political corruption, civil wars, division from within, all of the same characteristics that brought Rome down, men wanting to dress like women, women wanting to be like men, that was, this isn't you. It's exactly how the Roman Empire fell. It's how, it's, it's, it's how the Grecian Empire fell as well. It's, it's where man just begins to invent evil to the point where they implode from within. And guys, we're at the end of this civilization. I'm convinced of it. We're, we're, I don't know how we survive. Eh, you know, by, by God's grace, it could give us another 10, or 20, 30, 40 years. But I'm not counting on it quite honest with you. And you and I have the one, the one message that's able to transform lives. The message of reconciliation to a world that is separated from the living God. And you, you possess it and you've been given this official title as ambassador and you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Can I tell you Tenny, something? If all of us did what God has called us to do, we wouldn't have enough room in our churches. If all of us did what we were called to do, we would, we would have to have some video screens to have our next year's conference. Seriously. If, if we did what God has called us to do as men, guys, we could start 
this state on fire, this nation on fire. I challenge you, pray. Pray for a burden and pray for open doors to share your faith with those who God has brought into your path because it's not an accident, man. And you and I have, have, a, have a common bond here. We're on the same team. We're fighting for the same king. And we're here to further the kingdom. I, I love John's favorite verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And that, that, that's what we're to do personally. But we're, we're, we're to be expanding that kingdom, aren't we? Aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we? Yeah. We're just supposed to be expanding that kingdom. How do you do that? You got to share it. You got to share it with those around you. Father, we ask that you would, Lord, empower us Lord, to, to have a burden for souls. That we wouldn't be content going to heaven alone, God. That we would, Lord, have a, a burden for, for those friends and families and co-workers and those that, God, you would bring into our path, Lord, to declare this message of the gospel, this word of reconciliation. And Lord, we're, 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 to, we're to be plucking them out of the fire. Father, I pray. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would, would ignite within us a burden, Lord, uh, that, that we would weep for the lost. May we weeping for our friends that don't know you, God. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit would, would work mightily, that would work powerfully. Lord, we love you. God, would you make us the soldiers that you've called us to be, Lord, the ambassadors for your kingdom. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. One last story, guys. I, I, I was talking to John uh, over the phone when he called me. I, I had a, a good friend of mine, one of the guys that I got stoned with and I introduced to, to, to dope. Er, early early and 12 years old, playing baseball, got high together. And about, I would say maybe 12 years ago, I, I, I had, he was in a bad place. I invited him to come and live with me and just trying to, trying to just pour into his life and watch God change him. And he stood around for about six months, man. He started to grow in the Lord, but then he ran right back into his vomit, just totally bailed. I hadn't heard from him for, for quite a few years. He called me two days ago. And, and he was on the phone and, 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 and he was like, Ray, I found, I found Christ. I come back and I'm ready to, to live my life for the kingdom. And, and, and just last weekend, they, they, he, was at, he was at a men's conference there in, in Southern California, the, the big conference they host at, at, at Anaheim Convention Center. And, and what, what, what blew my mind, he was just saying, man, you're not going to believe this. Man, God just took away all of my desires. He, he just changed me. Guys, I've, I've been praying for that man for 32 years. 32 years. And when you see God answer that, man, you're like, all right, man. I'm hungry now. I, I, I want to see more. <laughs> like tasting blood, you know, I, 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 I don't want that to be the last one. I, we're we're, we're going to go out there and, and share with any, and, and this, this is it, man. The work of the Holy Spirit is able to do it. Amen. We're going to partake of communion right now, guys. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to pray. We're going to worship. The communion team's going to gather together in the back here and we're going to distribute the elements. And if you've been asked to serve the pastors back there, we make your way back there. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you, God, would, um, Lord, let this be a, a very, very holy time. And we realize, God, that, that we're celebrating the greatest event in all of history. That you gave your life. And then you defeated death. And you did it all because you love us. 
God, we ask that your Holy Spirit, God, would just, Lord, Lord, prepare us for going down the mountain. And that, God, you would give us courage and boldness and confidence. And, Lord, that we would be the men that you called us to be as we go back home and back to work. Lord, we ask for you, God, to be glorified in us. Would you bless this communion now? Would you just, Lord, remind us of the great sacrifice that you made on our behalf? Lord, we love you and we commit it to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the communion team. Would you guys come on up? I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on the cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down. By every storm, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name for. break of dawn the sun of heaven rose again oh trample death where is your seat the angels roar for Christ our King oh praise the Blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. That's it.
In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, before Paul goes into the whole conduct of the Lord's Supper, he addresses them in this fashion. He says, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion, the fellowship of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? And what he's saying is, look guys, this is what unites us. We're, we're about to partake in the body, the blood. And we're declaring that because of what this accomplished, you and I are, are, are united. And the next verse, he says this, for though many, for we though many are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. And he says, look, we're, we're, we're tight together. We're bond together because of this one event that Jesus gave his life. He shed his blood. And because of it, you and I are under the same covenant. We're, we're, we're brothers and we're soldiers for the kingdom. And we have, we have this incredible, incredible ministry that he's given to us to go out and to make a difference that we be changed and then we become the instrument of change. And then he says there in verse 24 of chapter 11, he says, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And Father, we ask that, Lord, you bless this bread. We're here taking a, to partaking in a meal together with our brothers. And God, would you, God, by your grace, God, would you, Lord, wash us and cleanse us and empower us and maybe we're reminded that God it was all it was all accomplished on this one day Lord would you bless this bread as we partake together and we ask it in Jesus name amen let's partake of the bread and this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and you drink this club I love this you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes we're making a proclamation that Jesus died for me for us father we ask that you bless this cup Lord your blood sacrificed on our behalf and God we are forever indebted and grateful God, would you, Lord, bless as we partake of it together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake of the cup.